Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Sam with Easy Breezy again, back with another project. We do have an eight horsepower Decumsey engine off of a Noma snowblower that a customer does want. And a couple things we've seen wrong with it. Uh, for one, the, the kill is not hooked up on it for the uh, pull shut off. And then second, uh, it has pretty bad gas in it, so we gotta drain that out, get the car clean, and get it ready for the customer, and uh, kinda go from there. I'll bring you in, along for the ride. All right, so first thing we're going to do is pull this choke handle off. It's a lot easier to do it before you get this cover loose. Now I did see that there is only two bolts. There's supposed to be one also right here. Get that loose out of there. It actually looks like whoever took this cover off before put the bolt that's supposed to be down here, right here, up here. So we'll just have to change that out, put a different bolt up here for this cover. Not a big deal. Now this customer is gonna be putting this motor on a log splitter I believe so I'm not too worried about uh, the bolts on it just for the simple fact he's gonna be taking all this off and putting an air cleaner on it but I do want to make sure it's, a, it's complete when he does buy it all right so we do have one back here Pretty simple to come off. So you just lift up the cover a little bit, slide it out around your choke, and you can pull it right off. First thing you want to do when you're working on the carburetors on these is you want to check your governor and see how tight that is. Because if, it, if it's not tight, you might as well just change the, uh, the carburetor on it because it's, it's not a good carb anyways. So, what we'll do, seems a little gummy, but everything does seem tight on it. All right, so now what we'll do, now I don't think we need to necessarily pull the carburetor off of this, but we're gonna set it up. Grab a 716s. Now, if you were rebuilding this, then yes. You'd have to pull the carburetor off and do all that, but we're not rebuilding it. How bad do you think this carb is, you guys? Let me know before I get her apart. You can see I'm still working it back and forth a little bit. There we go, now she's coming off real nice. Oh boy, I think this thing's gonna be pretty bad just by looking at the bolt. Really not that bad, you can tell it does have some old fuel in her. So, now everything does seem to be moving like it should. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get some carb cleaner, get a wire brush, take the needle seat to float out, make sure that floats good. And uh, when I get the tools, we'll come back. All right, uh, so I got the tools. We'll get the pin out of the carburetor here. All right, get that pulled out. I usually just like to set it in the bowl, that way we don't lose it. Same with the needle. Now you always wanna shake this. Now, 
don't hear anything, a lot of times these will fill up, get a little pinhole and they'll get gas in them and then they'll, the carburetor will leak. So what we'll do is we'll grab a rag. I like to just clean up the float a little bit. That way all this crud, when we put it back together, is not gonna be in the carburetor. All right. There you go. Now what we'll do is we'll take the tube on our cleaner. We'll spray it up through the carb. Okay, that sounds good. What you want to listen for is make sure it's actually coming through the carburetor. So now, actually, we're going to take this apart. Well, that needle looks, looks pretty nasty. Let's get it wiped off, see if she looks any better then. Now, this is one thing I haven't seen many people on YouTube actually do. Now, I've been doing small engines for about 20 years. I kind of grew up in it. Um, and one of the big issues with these uh, jets, I should say, is that, I'm just kind of getting some crud out of here real quick while I'm talking. Uh, there's actually a small little jet at the top of the first set of threads that you need to clean out because that's actually what the gas goes up in. Um, I'll kind of bring this closer so you guys can kind of see. She's not too clean. <laughs> it's actually pretty bad. Um, we may not even use this jet. Uh, what I'm going to at least try, see what we can do. Spray some of that in there so it breaks it up. All right, so what we're going to do is take this little wire here. And there's a hole right there. There we go. We did get it through. So when I get her cleaned up a little bit, I'll kind of show you guys. Uh, but you do want to run and make sure all your jets are cleaned out. If, the, if one of them's not cleaned out the best, this thing will not run good. Um, and I said I do have a customer that does want to buy this. So I want to make sure that it's good and cleaned out for them. A brass brush to it a little bit. Now you don't necessarily want to use wire too much because these are a brass jet. So you will, if you do too much, you will ruin them. So spray a little more through her. All right, I think we I think we saved her. It's a lot different now than what it did before. All right, so screw this in. Now usually like I've said in past videos on jets, you generally want to start out at one and a half. All right, so that's half, one, one and a half. All right, now make sure these little ports on here are nice and cleaned out. All right, so we're gonna clean out the bowl real quick. Again, try to use the wire brush. I like to try, try to clean up the outside of the bowl a little bit so you're not putting all kinds of crud on it. and It just looks a little bit better. 
Like I said, he's gonna be running this with an air cleaner on it, so it's not gonna have that big shroud over it. So it's gonna just make it look a little better when he's running it with an air cleaner on it. Now what we'll do is we'll set this back in there. So, now that we got the pin and the needle in, you want to listen for a click. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but that's, a lot, that's sealing. So when the float goes up, it shuts the fuel off because the carburetor doesn't need any more fuel. All right, so we'll get this up there. And the top gasket does still look good. You don't want to force it if it doesn't go up easy or thread up easy you don't want to force it all right there we go all right so we'll get the gas drained on this now i do have a drain pan down on the ground there those will get this off here Take the gas cap off so it actually breathes. We'll let that drain out. We'll come back when she's all gone. All right, so we'll just tip it around a little bit. I think we got everything. Well, there's a little bit there. Seems like it was just old fuel, so it's not gonna be too much of a big deal. We are gonna wanna make sure this fuel line is drained. There we go. Now get that push back on. There we go. Now we're gonna put it on the floor, bring it over by the door, start it up, make sure she runs good. All right, so we got the fuel in it. Go down, see how she starts up. Give her a few primes, give her full throttle. she runs good we'll put her on the bench get the covers back on and then I think she's ready to go all right we'll go ahead and get this cover on here slide it on like that now I did get another bolt for up here started. You don't want to tighten them until you get at least all of them started because they all kind of fit in with each other. So that's where we got one more on the back side here. Now this one can be a tricky one to put in here. actually right now on the wrong side of that clip. There we go. Get it up there. There we go. Oh. This also holds the dipstick bracket also too. So a lot of people don't put these ones in. You want to make sure these get put in. Okay, that one can be tight now. Tight. We'll get the stop on tight here. And now, 
after we get this one tight, what I was saying before is they didn't have this wire here hooked up. Now, when he does put it on the log splitter, he might not use it, but I just want to get it hooked up. And that just goes down here. And see, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it kind of hooks on this bolt down here. Hook it on there, and then you can tighten this Phillips screw down here, right up. All right, I think she's all ready. All right, guys, there you have it. We got the eight horse Tecumseh done. Got her all running good. Uh, customers should be real happy with it. Like I said, it is going on a log splitter, so more than likely he is going to be taking that cover off. Uh, but I like to sell it with it all complete. So, uh, but I mean, it's pretty easy. It's probably a pretty short video compared to what I have been putting out lately. So if you like it, hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe. If you like it, please share it around. We are a new channel, so... We'd like to get out there as much as possible. And always remember, stay out of trouble, even though it's not always fun. Have a good one, you guys.